you have your Bibles, open them to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to read from the first chapter and also from the third chapter of the book of Ephesians. Now first of all we read from the first chapter of the book of Ephesians beginning to read with the 16th verse where Paul said to the church at Ephesus writing to them that he ceased not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. And then he goes on to tell them what he is praying for them. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Then I want you to look into the third chapter of the book of Ephesians. And here's another prayer that Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus. The third chapter, and we shall begin to read here with the 14th verse. For this cause... He says, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Now those are two tremendous prayers. And they are given by the Spirit of God. I like to put it this way, they're spirit-indicted prayers, spirit-anointed prayers. And uh, they live on. And you can pray those prayers for yourself. A lot of times, we wonder just how to pray for fellow Christians. And we say, well, God bless sister so-and-so, and God bless brother so-and-so. And to tell you the real honest truth about it, that does little or no good at all. You almost might as well just twiddle your thumbs and say, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Does just as much good. Because to tell you the real truth about it, if you look into that third verse of the first chapter of Ephesians, the Bible said God's already blessed them with all the blessings they are. They just haven't found out about it yet. And so what Paul did was pray that the eyes of their understanding might be enlightened so they'd know, praise God, what was freely given unto them of God. Can you see that? I remember the last church that I pastored, and I'd been preaching about uh, 15 years. Really at the time I started praying about 13, 14 years. And uh, I would just leave my Bible on the altar in the sanctuary open to Ephesians 1, uh, or if I'd closed Ephesians, the third chapter. And every time I'd go into the church, Parsons is right next door to the church, and my study, pastor's study, was there in the church. 
And so I'd go in and out the church uh, three or four times every single day, sometimes a half dozen times. And, and every time, over this period of time of probably six weeks or so, that I'd go into the church, I'd bow on my knees before the altar, and I'd say to the Father, Now, Father, I'm praying these two prayers for myself. And everywhere Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding, I'd say that the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened. Everywhere he put you, I put me. Amen. And you know, when I began to pray that way, and I'd been preaching, like I said, for 14 years, and yet in a matter of two or three months' time, when I prayed these prayers every day for myself, the eyes of my understanding began to be enlightened. And I saw so much in the scriptures. I, I, I learned more just by praying these two prayers when the revelation of God's word came then. I learned more in a matter of six months than I'd learned in 14 years put together preaching and pastoral work and studying every day. In fact, I, I got so much revelation on the word of God that I said to my wife, what in the world have I been preaching? <laughs> I said, it's a wonder to me. I was so stupid. It's a wonder to me the deacons had, didn't, had come by and tell me to get in out of the rain. Now, start praying those prayers for yourself. And then here's another little secret. For fellow Christians, and wondering how to pray for fellow Christians, now praying for sinners is a different subject. We'll not get on that right now. But you see, Paul's praying for believers, the church at Ephesus, and it belongs to the church in Nashville or the church wherever you are from. And uh, I, I know in, in some of my own kinfolks, I'd talk to them about certain things. Remember on one occasion out on the field and field ministry and I'd come back to my home and one of my relatives was in desperate need. They needed help, physical help, divine healing. They needed some spiritual help. And I tried to talk to them to get them to see certain truths from God's word, but they just didn't see it, didn't agree with it, seemed to be very opposed. Well, I went my way in the next meeting I went to every single day. In fact, right at first, I'd do it twice a day. I'd kneel by the bed, my bedroom, and I'd just open my Bible to Ephesians 1 and then Ephesians 3 and just say to the Lord, Now, Lord, I'm praying these prayers for so-and-so and call their name. And I'd just read that prayer off, put their name in there. And I did that for 10 days, at least once a day and most of the time twice a day. At the end of 10 days, they wrote me a letter and said, you know, I'm beginning to see things I never saw before. <laughs> Praise God. See, it began to happen. It began to happen. And, and so you learn here how to pray for fellow Christians. This is what God wants you to know. And if you come to know what he's talking about here in the first chapter of Ephesians, in the third chapter of Ephesians, you won't need anything else. There won't be anything else for you to pray about for your fellow Christian. They will have arrived when they're full of all the fullness of God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. So, so that's, that's the way to do it. That's the way to pray for others.